So this is my lecture on how to create animations for my students. Um, I'm using um, Marlon Banto's um, Introduction to SolidWorks Motion Manager um, session that he created for SolidWorks World. Um, I have a link to those files so that you can follow along with me. Just download the files and work with me. Um, doesn't matter what version of SOLIDWORKS you're in. Um, it can be the student version. It can be the standard version. They all have the ability to create animations. And this is a very useful skill. Um, so if you look at the very bottom left of your screen, you'll notice there's a tab that says Model and a tab that says Motion Study Run. We're going to click on Motion Study One. That takes us into the animation or motion study um, interface. And you'll notice I still have the project, the standard browser up here. And then I have a copy of the same browser below with some additions. I've got orientation and camera views and photo views. And I've got some tools here, all right, that we're going to be going through. And I've got a timeline here. And these little diamonds are called key points or keys. And basically, they control, um, if you look, notice here on this little shortcut, it controls the movement, um, the mates, and the, uh, the appearance and the display of each component. And if you expand the component, notice it's move, whether you're using exploded view, appearance, and the mates. Okay, and you can kind of see the mates where you can control different mates, you know, where you can turn that mate on or off or edit the mate. So each component you can make changes to. Uh, and when you're planning your animation, I want you to think in terms of a, a, like a movie script. So um, notice wherever this bar is, that's the time in your movie. So if you're like at the very start where the curtain comes up or the camera turns on, you're at zero seconds. And then you're at five seconds into the movie or 10 seconds. So what do you want to have happen at what time? So you want to kind of position your model. And we're going to um, look at ways to change the views later on. But just for this, just getting started, um, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create a new motion study. Okay, um, I have my time at zero seconds, so I want my arm to start out here at the down position. So I just put my left mouse button over that arm and positioned it where I want it to be at the zero second mark. And then I'm going to go over to the five second mark. And notice I've got this gray bar here at the five second mark. And then I'm going to move the arm where I want it at the five second mark. And notice you can see um, at that left arm that got moved, you can see that there was movement. You can see this green line going from the zero second to the five second. And if I want it to return to the original position, I can just do a copy and paste. So I can right click on that key point and copy it, and then go over to the 10 second mark and right click and paste it. And that returns it to the original. So I'm going to um, notice I've got a button here that says um, calculate. And I just want to double check here. Um, um, at the um, right up here, there's a calculate but button, and that's similar to a compile button for a software code. It basically extrapolates what the motion's going to be. So notice when I click the calculate, SolidWorks calculates all the motion that should go between the 0 and the 10 second mark. And notice I've got a play from start. And you should be familiar with these controls, the play from start, the play, and the stop, right? Because those are standard for any kind of recording device. So if I just want to play, that'll just play it. And if I want to stop it at any point, I can click on stop. And notice I've got right here, it says playback normal. I also have playback loop. 
And what that does is it starts it at the beginning, goes to the end, and then starts right back from the beginning. So that's a loop. And notice I also have playback mode reciprocate. So what that does is it plays it at the end and then it rewinds and then it goes back. See that? So you have various ways. And then this is the speed. So I can slow it down. I can make it really, really super slow or I can speed it up. See that? So you have a lot of controls here to kind of help you with your animation. All right, so that was the first exercise. We're just kind of playing things around. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a script. Now, um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. We're going to um, copy and paste this motion study. So I'm going to come over there and I'm going to say copy it. And so I have a new motion study that basically does the same thing as the first motion study. But we're going to. Um, So when you're creating your animation, when you've got your, um, when you got your animation kind of doing what you want, you might want to consider doing a copy and paste so that you can kind of branch off, try something different. And then if it's not, if it, you mess up, you still have your original motion study you can use. Okay, so if you look on page 13 of the handout, he's got a script. And the script is both arms, this arm and this arm, are going to be visible until the five seconds. And then between five seconds and ten seconds, they're going to transition over to being hidden. And then we have this base here. We're going to transition it from the current color at zero seconds. And then at the five second mark, we're going to change it to blue. And then we have the plunger here, and that's going to be shaded until five seconds. And then we're going to transition it to wireframe at the 10 second mark. So we're going to play with different ways of modifying the display. So we're going to start with the arms, and I'm on page um, 14 of the tutorial. Um, and I've got the left arm and the right arm. So I want to kind of come down here until I see. So I've got the left arm right here. And I want to copy the appearance between the zero second and the um, five seconds. So I want the appearance to stay the same between zero and five seconds. So I'm going to copy this appearance between zero and five seconds. So this appearance is going to stay the same. And I'm going to do the same thing on the right arm. I want the appearance to stay the same between the um, zero second mark and the five second mark. Okay? And then I'm going to move my cursor to the 10 second mark. At the 10 second mark, I want the left and right arm to be hidden. So I'm going to. Uh, right click on the right arm and say hide. Notice it's, it's changed to this little magenta. And then I'm going to come up to the left arm and I'm going to right click and say hide. Notice we've got this magenta and notice the arms aren't visible. All right. Um, I'm going to change it back to playback mode normal and I'm going to recalculate and watch how at the five second mark the arms start transitioning so that they disappear. So by 10 seconds they're completely gone. Okay. So that's the first thing. Now I'm on page 15 
and I'm going to change, set my time cursor to five seconds. So I've moved back here to five seconds. And what I want is I want to change the, um, the, um, the uh, base plunger. Okay, so that's this base right here. Okay, so I'm going to locate that base plunger, which is right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on appearance and it brings up the little appearance panel and I want to change the color to blue at the five second mark. Notice it's blue and um, notice the appearance here and I'm going to green check and so notice that the appearance is going to transition from here to here. Okay. So if I move over here, notice it doesn't sh it's showing me the original color, but when I mouse over here, it's showing that the appearance is changing to blue. Do you see that and when I hover? See the appearance? It's showing no appearance has been added, and here it shows the appearance is blue. Let's see what it looks like when I calculate it. And I'm going to play from start. So see how it transitions to blue? Now, if I wanted it to be a more subtle, sudden um, appearance, I could copy and paste this over here and notice how this is blank. So that's saying that the color is staying the same from here to here, and then here is where it's going to change. So again, I'm going to play it from the start so you can see. See that? So you have a lot of control in how those appearance changes happen. Okay, so now the third thing we were going to do is we were going to change this plunger. And we want to change it um, so that it goes um, to wireframe. So on the plunger, <coughs> which is right here, I want the appearance to stay the same between 0 and 5 seconds. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come over to 5 seconds. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to move my timeline to the 10 second mark. And at the 10 second mark, I want this um, to be on, um, I want this to be wireframe. So I'm going to go over to component display and say wireframe. Notice it shows me the wireframe. Now I'm going to play it from the start. Okay, so see how you can um, change the display in all sorts of different ways. All right, so moving on, we're going to page 19 of the handout. And I am opening up the um, <clears throat> let's find it. The clutch. So I'm opening up the clutch assembly. And there it is. Okay, so here we are in the clutch assembly. And we're going to look at the motion study again. All right, so in, if you're like feeling like you're really pressed for time to create your animation, we have a tool here called the camera the animation wizard and what that does is it will create the animation for you based on what you have in the assembly and notice that I have an exploded view that's already been um, defined in this assembly so I can leverage off this exploded view alright 
um, and include that in my animation. All right, so I'm going to click on this animation wizard. All right, and notice what we can do is we can rotate, we can explode, and collapse. So at the so in terms of rotate, think about like at a car show where you have those cars on a pedestal and they rotate around, so you can see all all 360 degrees view of the car. This is kind of what we're doing with the model. We're creating a 360 degree view of the car. So if we were looking at it in terms of the script, let's say we want to rotate the model for five seconds. We want to explode it for 10 seconds. We want to collapse it for 10 seconds, and then we want to rotate it again. So that's our story. We're going to look at it. We're going to explode it. We're going to put it back together, and then we're going to rotate it again. So we can click on Next. And notice you can pick which axis you want to rotate around. I'm going to rotate around the X axis. I'm going to say I want to do five rotations. I'm going to say Next. And I'm going to say I want to rotate for a duration of five seconds. And I'm going to go Finish. And notice it shows you this little did 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 These are all the rotations. And if I calculate it, this is what it looks like where it's rotating. Okay. So now um, I'm going to click on Animation Wizard again. And this time I'm going to explode it. Now in order for the explode or the collapse to work, you have to have the exploded view already predefined in your um, assembly. If you don't have it predefined, you're not going to be able to use the explode or the collapse. And then I'm going to go next. And notice it's starting it at the five second mark. If you want to have like a little pause between the rotation and when it starts, you can set the start, start time to the six second mark. And I'm going to say I want a duration of 16 seconds, so 10 seconds. And then I'm going to go finish. OK, and um, it gives you its best guesstimate for the explode and the rotation based on how many steps it's got going on the um, explosion. So if we play this from the start, here's our rotation. There's going to be a one second pause, and then it starts exploding. And notice it automatically is going to add time depending on what you do. So I'm not going to select the animation wizard again. This time I'm going to do a collapse. And notice it's starting it at the 22 second. Again, if I wanted to have a slight pause, I can do start it at 23 seconds and say that I want it to take 10 seconds for the collapse. And then I'm going to say finish. And I'm going to start from the beginning. So again, I have that rotation, pause, and explode. A pause and then put stuff together. Okay, And then to finish up, I'm going to click on Animation Wizard again. And I'm going to do another rotation. And again, I can set how many rotations I want. I'm going to say five. I'm going to have a duration of five seconds. And again, if I want to have a little pause between each step, I can add a, a second before it, it starts the rotation. Then I'm going to go Finish. And you can see that pause between the 33 and the 34 second. And I'm going to play it from the start.
there's the collapse and there's the final rotation. Okay, so that was fast and easy. I didn't have to do a lot of computation or even really thinking, just kind of planning it out. And if I'm happy with that animation, I can save it. So I'm going to click on the save. Um, I pick where I want to save it. Okay, so I'm saving it there. Um, I want to save it as an AVI. Um, notice that I can pick what I want to add output. I'm going to pick the entire animation. All right. Um, you can also save things as a bitmaps or, or uh, to targas. Basically what that does is every frame is a bitmap. Think of like your flip book. Um, like if you were a kid and you did one of those little bouncy ball um, flip books as a kid, it's kind of like that. It'll create a series of images, uh, one image for every frame. But we want to do a complete AVI. And then we're going to go save. Um, I'm going to replace it. And then it's going to ask you what a pre uh, compressor you want to use. You want to use Microsoft Video One. These other options are if you want raw footage that you can then import into um, a movie editor. Um, if you save it to Microsoft Video One, then you can play it using any Windows Media. You can use play it using Windows Media Player, and you can upload it to Facebook or YouTube or um, Instagram or Twitter or whatever you want to do with it, or email it to someone and they can play it. You want to uncheck where it says keyframe, and then you want to say OK. And it's going to ask you if you want to recalculate, and you can say yes. And it's just going to, and you notice there's kind of this little flashy thing it's doing. Well, what it's doing is it's saving those bitmap images, like that flipbook, and it's compiling it into an AVI file for you. And that's it. Okay, so that's the end of part two or part three. Now we're on part four and page 28. So I want to open up um, the plunger hook assembly. Okay, and again, this is part of your downloads. Okay, and once again, we're going to create um, an animation of this. So we're going to go over to the motion study, all right? And if you scroll all the way down, all the way down to the mates, there's this distance mate. And we've got this little claw mechanism, kind of like the claws, uh, the claw machines that like to eat your money at, at video arcades. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the distance. So I'm going to come over to the five second mark and I'm going to right click her on this distance and I'm going to edit the dimension. And at five seconds, I, instead of zero inches, I want it to be four inches. And then I'm going to green check. Okay. And then um, at the 10 second mark, I want the distance to be the same. So I want to copy the distance from the distance value from the zero second and paste it to the 10 second. Okay? So that way it'll go from 0 to 4 and then from 4 to 0. Okay? All right? And let's calculate that so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to play from the start. So it goes all the way down and then all the way back up. Now what I want to do is I want to change the views depending on the time. So I'm going to scroll up 
notice I've got orientation and camera views and if I click on here notice I can change the view orientation depending on the time okay so what I'm gonna do is I am going to put my mouse um, I'm gonna say at this at the zero second mark I want it to be on the isometric view okay and then I'm gonna come over to the five second and I'm gonna say at the I want the view orientation to be at the top view and then at the 10 second mark I want the view orientation to be the bottom view okay so let's see what that looks like if I play it from the start and notice that it's um, going up and down even as it's changing orientation so um, I'm gonna um, set the view orientation to isometric here so you can kind of see all right and I'm gonna change the view orientation um, back to isometric at um, this point okay and I'm gonna play from the start see that so that's pretty cool all right that you can change orientations like that all right so um, that is basically the end of the animation lecture. You've got a pretty good idea of how to change orientations, how to change displays, and um, how to save your animation once you've created it. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing all the animations that you guys create. Um, and I know you'll be sharing that them, the animations you create with friend, fa family, colleagues, and having a lot of fun with it.